May I request all the dignitaries to please come up to the dais. Distinguished guests, respected fam faculty members, students, and my dear friends, a pleasant morning to all. It gives me immense pleasure to extend you a warm welcome to this solemn occasion as we have gathered here to commemorate the life and legacy of Dr. J. Alexander Ayes. Before we proceed to the memorial lecture in honor of Dr. Alexander, let us take a moment to reflect on the significance of this gathering. Hailing from Kandachira, Kollam, Dr. Alexander received his early education in Kollam and commenced his career as English lecturer at Fatima Mother National College. Later, in 1963, he joined the Indian Administrative Service in Karnataka State Cadre. For nearly two decades, Dr. Alexander collaborated with Professor J. Philip, the founder of Savior Institute of Management and Entrepreneurship, while contributing its sagacious energies to science growth plans, diversification, and brand image. Dr. Alexander has also served as the former president of Sime Society, as well as former chairman of Sime Kochi. Dr. Alexander has held multiple positions throughout his 83 year long life and all this while his love for Kollam remained steadfast and he held anyone from Kollam close to his heart. Thus today Fatima Mother National College and Savior Institute of Management and Entrepreneurship Kochi have joined hands to organize the first commemorative lecture not only to remember but also to celebrate a remarkable individual whose impact has left an indelible mark in our hearts and minds. Let us commence this ceremony on a pious note. I call upon Alina and Alfia of 2nd PG English to render the prayer song. of the world, you step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see, beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. All together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came. To the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Thank you, Alfie and Alina. 
May I now request our beloved manager, Reverend Father Abhilash Grigori, to formally welcome this August gathering. Good morning to all. Swagata Prasangatana Padran Chiminitana Nalgidi Kinoda Padran the Mani Mudele Padran the Kali Vareula Samevan. She already Padran the Kali Kadina the Gunda and the Swagata Prasangam Valade Krasoma Kanaita and Paristramikinda. In the Namalu de Vimichu Gudi Kinoda Ere Priangarinum Behumaninum Adrininumaya Doctor J. Alexander Ayes Arne Ormagale Pudukuan Vindian Chile Chividangal Namude Chividate Epodium Suganda Puri the Maki Kundikim Averade Ormagal Namude Chividate Kudal Sundare Makam Averade Ormagal Namude Chividate Kudal Deep the Makam Atheratil Tande Chividate Karmam Gunda Manishatam Gunda, Hridaya Lalitim Gunda, Adayala Pedatia, Urivishta Victiana, Doctor J. Alexander Adeham Kolangar and Anna in the Gunda, Namukoke, Apimani Yam, Anandikam Uribakshe, Kerala Tilina, Malayaligal, Uribad, Shakiri Tulla, Uristalamana, Bangalore Bangaloreil. Malayaligal Chekeran Tudangia Kalam Mudale Avarka Avishamaya Sahai Ingalam Paudika Sahaja Ingalam Marga Nurdeshangalam Bautika Maitula Sahai Ingalam Nalgia Uribishta Victia Idno Doctor J. Alexander Adeham Karnadaga Chief Secretary I to Sevenam Chidu Karnadaga Tile Urimandri I to Sevenam Chidu Adrekala Kuberi I Anegam Victigalude, Chividate, Sparshikuim, Sahaikim Chidu in the Didi Lana, Adekatine, Namalina, Ormikinadam, Aorma, where Akoshamai Kondadanadam. Yorma, where Akoshamakanam in the Chinde Lana, Saim, Seven Institute of Management, Fatima Mada National College, Urimiche, Doctor J. Alexander Aye Sinde. Ormekai Tula Uri Commemorati Lecture Series RM Pikam in the Chindikinadam Thirmana Medakanadam Adinde Adite Lecture Lake Ningle Lavareim Uthri Snekatoda Gudi Swagadam Chigian In the Namode Opamulla Vishta Victigale Yan Krude Burvam Swagadam Chigiana Savior Institute of Management in Day President I Seven Amanistikina, Mr. Anil Philip Ramoda Pamunda Adeha Tinde Dana, Eode Ashevum, Eode Ure Chindaim, Eode in the Yatharthi Magana Chinde de Paragil, Adeha Tinde, Manasunda, Adeha Tinde, Provartanangalunda Adeham Vipro Iludeana, Tande, Career Aram Pichada. Lenovo, Vodafone, Tudangia, Company Galiloke, Executive Vice President item, Executive Director item, okay, Seven and Cheda Deham, Ipol, Simon Day, President, Dekate, Sneha Burvam, Fatima Mada National College Lake, Swagadam Chain. In the Namodopam, Behumana Petta, TK, Nair, IAS, Sarunda, Manmohan, Indian Pradhana Madri Aidana, Manmohan Singh in Day, Principal Secretary, Advisor Maita, Sevenam Cheda, Adeham in the J. Alexander Sarnik Rucham, Namoda, Sam Sarikim. Deham India, Japan, Bendatil, Valare, Savisheshamai Ridil, Purogadi, Undai, the Sri TK Nair, Ayesar in Day, Pravartana Palamaitan. Iure Bendam. Valade, Manoheramai to Turanu de Poganodinum. E Bentangal and Tangilimoke, Vidaligal Undaga, Nedeula Purake, Valade Kriat Magamai, Dabit Gunda, Sara, 
ജപ്പാൻ ഇന്ത്യ ബന്ധത്തിനെ വളരെ സുഗമമായിട്ട് മുമ്പോട്ട് കൊണ്ടുപോകാനായിട്ട് സഹായിച്ചു ബഹുമാനപ്പെട്ട ടി കെ നായ സാറിനെ സ്നേഹപൂർവ്വം ഫാത്തിമ മാതാ നാഷണൽ കോളേജിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു ഇന്ന് നമ്മോടൊപ്പം ആശംസ അർപ്പിക്കുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി ബഹുമാനപ്പെട്ട പി സി സിറിയ ഐ എ എസ് സാറുണ്ട് കേരളത്തിലും തമിഴ്നാട്ടിലും വളരെ പരിചിതമായ മുഖമാണ് അദ്ദേഹം തം തമിഴ്നാട്ടിൽ മധുരയുടെ ഡിസ്ട്രിക്ട് കളക്ടറായിട്ടും ചീഫ് സെക്രട്ടറി അഡീഷണൽ ചീഫ് സെക്രട്ടറി ആയിട്ടും ഒക്കെ സേവനം ചെയ്ത അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ സാന്നിധ്യം ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് വലിയ അനുഗ്രഹപ്രദമാണ് സാറിനെ സ്നേഹപൂർവ്വം ഫാത്തിമ കോളേജിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു നമ്മൾ ഒത്തിരി സന്തോഷത്തോടും സ്നേഹത്തോടും കൂടി കൊല്ലം നഗരത്തിലെ ഏറ്റവും പ്രമുഖരായ വ്യക്തികളിൽ ഒരാൾ നമ്മുടെ ഒപ്പമുണ്ട് സമാദരണിനായ ബഹുമാനപ്പെട്ട ജനാബ് ഷഹൽ ഹസൻ മുസ്ലിയാർ നമ്മോടൊപ്പമുണ്ട് അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ ടി കെ എം ഇൻസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂട്ട് ടി കെ എം ട്രസ്റ്റിൻ്റെ ചെയർമാനാണ് അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ മഹനീയമായ സാന്നിധ്യം ഞങ്ങളുടെ കോളേജിനെ അനുഗ്രഹ പ്രദാനമാക്കിയിരിക്കുന്നു സാറിനെ ഒത്തിരി സന്തോഷത്തോടുകൂടി ഈ ചടങ്ങിലേക്ക് ഞങ്ങളുടെ കോളേജിലേക്കും സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു നമ്മുടെ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട പ്രിൻസിപ്പളുണ്ട് മറ്റ് അധ്യാപകരുണ്ട് അലക്സാണ്ടർ സാറിൻ്റെ കുടുംബത്തിൽ നിന്നുള്ള വ്യക്തികളുണ്ട് അലക്സാണ്ടർ സാറിനെ ഇഷ്ടപ്പെടുന്ന വ്യക്തികളുണ്ട് അവരെല്ലാവരെയും ഒറ്റ വാക്കിൽ സ്നേഹപൂർവ്വം ഫാത്തിമ കോളേജിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു സ്നേഹമുള്ളവരെ സൈം ഇൻസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂട്ടിൽ നിന്ന് കടന്നു വന്ന എല്ലാവരെയും ഒത്തിരി സ്നേഹത്തോടെ ഫാത്തിമ കോളേജിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു ഇനി നിങ്ങളെ ഓരോരുത്തരെയും ഇവിടെ വന്നിരിക്കുന്ന വിദ്യാർത്ഥികളെയും അധ്യാപകരെയും ഇവിടെ കൂടിയിരിക്കുന്ന നിങ്ങളെ എല്ലാവരെയും ഒരിക്കൽ കൂടി സ്നേഹപൂർവ്വം സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ട് എൻ്റെ വാക്കുകൾ ഉപസംഹരിക്കുന്നു നന്ദി Thank you, Father. Mr. Anil Philip started his career with Vipro and had a long stint in the technology sector in which he has associated with many prominent firms such as Lenovo, IBM and Vodafone India Limited. A proven leader with over 25 years of experience in IT and telecom industry, Mr. Philip is currently the president of Syme Society and aims at re-imaging business education in a way that enhances value for students, employers and the world. I deem it as a privilege to invite Mr. Anil Philip to share the reflections by Saim. Good morning. Let me start by, you know, acknowledging the presence of Dr. Alexander's classmate, Mr. D.K. Nair. And you should be privileged that he used to be the principal secretary to three prime ministers of India. So you're hearing from, you know, a living legend when you come to that. Somebody who walked the corridors of the prime minister's offices of India. While he's not on the dais, I mentioned to a friend of mine who had passed out of the TKM college that the chairman of TKM college might be here. And when I met him, I said, you know, everybody thinks of you as, you know, the person who put column on the map by uh, creating TKM college. So, sir, it's a privilege to have you uh, in the audience with us. So thank you for being here. Mr. P.C. Syriac uh, is another person who's very close to Zyme. He's like Mr. Dr. Alexander and IAS and very, very closely associated and has helped Zyme a lot. Of course, Dr. Cynthia and Dr. Abhilash, thank you for uh, bringing us here and welcoming us. And of course, a very special welcome to, uh, not a welcome because this is not my diet, but to Sarah. Uh, his granddaughter, it has made it special. And Nusrat, her husband, who's also traveled with her, 
to be part of this uh, first commemorative lecture. I do want to also acknowledge uh, Mr. Krishna Kumar. He has played a big role in helping us put this together. And of course, Dr. Franci from our uh, director of our Zion campus and the other faculty members. So thank you, everyone. However, uh, welcome students. And I will try to share with you why you should be proud and happy that you are in the same college that someone as great as Dr. Alexander once taught in this college. And I'm sure that's a reflection of what a great college you are part of today. As I was introduced, I'm Anil Philip. I am the president of Xavier Institute of Management and Entrepreneurship. This is an elected position, which we do every three years. My predecessor was Dr. Alexander, who unfortunately held this position only for a year and a half before his untimely death on Jan 14, 2022. And at that time, a lot of people told me that you have very, very big shoes to fill. And, you know, when you hear something like this, you realize that there is no point trying to even think of filling those shoes. So I just bought a new pair of shoes so that you're not trying to copy something but learn from someone like Dr. Alexander of how to be, a, you know, how you can help society, how you can follow in his footsteps and try to lead a better life for all of us and for Zion. Now, this idea of having this commemorative lecture, the, the credit goes to my father, Professor Philip, somebody who was very close to Dr. Alexander, who really felt beholden to him. You may be wondering why he's not here. The only reason he's not here and I'm here in his place is because he's not up to, you know, feeling up to it. He's a little under the weather. And the moment he thought of this idea, he called Bharat Mata College and he asked them, would you partner with us in doing this uh, event? And without hesitation, they all said, yes, it would be a privilege. And that is why we are really thankful to Bharat Mata College, the principal and the manager for agreeing to partner with us uh, in this. Now, Dr. Alexander's association with us goes a long way with Zyme when I say that. He was our Zyme Kochi chairman for six years, the president for one and a half years, and instrumental in helping us get the land in Zyme, in Kochi with, by speaking to uh, the then chief minister, Mr. Uman Chandi. So that's how we landed up in Kochi. Now, a few reflections as my topic says. My first, my first interaction with Dr. Alexander happened in a car while we were in Kochi. This was about 12 years back. And I was this corporate guy, finished my MBA many years back, thinking that we are doing, serving, you know, big problems of the world, uh, selling a few laptops, etc., etc. And in that journey, I realized people who really solve problems are people like Dr. Alexander. He explained to me how when he was the BWSSB chairman, the biggest challenge he had is pumping water from the Kaveri to Bangalore. Remember, Bangalore is 3,000 3, feet above sea level. Look at the amount of infrastructure you need to do that. To give water to one of the few cities in the world which does not have a river flowing through it. And he, he is probably instrumental in bringing Kaveri to Bangalore. That is what I would say, not so solving world hunger, but solving water problems of a city like Bangalore, where we didn't have the water problem. As I mentioned to him, he was key to the growth of Zion. The second campus actually is a tribute to him. We would never have got the land if it was not for him. Now, it is a three-acre campus, 120 students we take in every year. So about 240 students are there, all residential, 100% residential, and it is in Kalamashiri. 
he always had a special way to make everyone feel special and the best example that i have is that of the way he would make my mother feel special usually all the accolades would go to my father he was one person who would every time say professor philip forget about what you do you have a reason you have a drive you have a passion but you could have done nothing without with this without the help of your wife and i think that's the same kind of love that he had for his wife who also happened to be a lecturer at bharat mata college and i think his affection and respect for women is a reflection of how he would always go out of the way to ensure that they were lifted up and given their worth which very few people at that time did he would light up a room and i will what i would like to do uh, ranjana if if that video is ready right uh, i was supposed to do it earlier but i think in the flow i forgot about it you know when he entered a room he would light it up just with that smile his ability to sing or break into a song was amazing and he was a great singer now it was almost just before he passed away he had an intuition that the lord is calling him and he recorded a beautiful song in delhi just before coming to bangalore and a few days later he passed on i would like to play that song because that song has lingered in many of our lives and it stays on and we always think of him there were many things to remembering him by but this always reminds us of dr alexander we can play that
So you would have seen how well he sings and he could do that at you know a moment split and that smile really he would just walk in and light up a room and you saw some of those glimpses there you know the there is a line happy to help i think it was invented thanks to him he would come meet you for the first time and his eyes would almost tell you is there any way i can help you these are some of the lessons that you all should all try to take how can you think of someone else rather than yourself and that is a lot that dr alexander always thought about he was an excellent speaker and all he needed never a pen never a paper memory and the gift of telling the best stories that was dr alexander for you zaim has had the privilege of being associated with him and in an honor we've done a lot and i'm not going to spend time on that but i'd like to say and every moment we get it's just our way of saying thank you dr alexander for being part of zaim i don't know how many of you have seen the movie troy there is a line in that movie troy it reads something like this if they ever tell my story let them say i walked with giants men rise and fall like the winter wheat but these names will never die let them say i lived in the time of hector tamer of horses let them say i lived in the time of achilles for me it is something similar i'm privileged to have met and known the great man dr j alexander you must feel privileged to be part of fatima mata national college where he taught in the early part of his career his first part of his career it was my privilege to be under his leadership we miss his smile we miss his support we miss the great man let me end with this quote from paul valery a great man is one who leaves others at a loss after he is gone please be inspired by his life and let us stay inspired i want to once again thank Fatima Mata National College for bringing us together and giving us this lovely platform and all these students whom we can share the first commemorative lecture with thank you very much thank you sir now we move on to the most awaited moment of the day let me introduce to you the esteemed speaker of the day Shri T K Nair IAS, who will deliver the commemorative lecture. T K Nair sir joined Indian Administrative Service in 1963 in Punjab, Kerala. He had a spectacular career in which he has adorned many covetous positions, such as the advisor and principal secretary to the Prime Minister of India. He also served. as a chairman of public enterprises selection board government of india and as chief secretary to government of punjab while working under former prime minister dr manmohan singh as his principal secretary and later as his advisor he has contributed to further developing japan india bilateral relations the framework of annual summit meetings has been introduced between the two countries since 2005 and it was the initiative of tk nayasar which helped to realize this framework nayasar played an important role particularly in the area of trade commerce and infrastructure development he 
has been involved in flagship projects of Japan India cooperation, such as Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor and the Chennai Bangalore Industrial Corridor. He has also played an important role in solving the problems that Japanese companies faced when they established their business in India. It is most appropriate that we have TK Nayasar as the chief speaker of the day since Naya Sir was a classmate and batchmate of Alexander Sir during his IAS training. And thus, I invite Naya Sir to address the gathering. Reverend Dr. Abhilash Grigori, Mr. Anil J. Philip, President of XIMA, my very good friend and uh, ex colleague in the service, Mr. Suryak. Madam Sarah Jules, who is a member of the family of uh, Mr. Alexander, the principal of this great institution, Dr. Cynthia Catherine Michael, my very good friend, Mr. Krishna Gumar of Symphony <coughs> Television and his uh, gracious wife. Mr. Mani, my good friend and uh, an ex-colleague in the service. And ladies and gentlemen, we have the very august presence of uh, the patriarch of uh, the uh, Angle family here. Well, sir, it is a great uh, pleasure. It's a great privilege for all of us to have you with us this uh, after, I mean this morning. We know of your great contribution to uh, education, commerce, trade, industry, and uh, the indelible mark that you are leaving on uh, these areas, particularly in the city of uh, Kolam. Uh, you are uh, the patriarch of Kolam, if I may say so. So your presence uh, gives great uh, encouragement to the college and also the XMI and indeed all of us present. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard uh, uh, you know, very eloquent words about my old uh, friend, the late uh, Mr. Alexander, whom I will now refer to as Alex, because it is too formal for me to say Dr. Alexander or J. Alexander. Alex is no more with us. We all know that. But all of us, not only really those who are present here, but those who have ever, ever came across or come across Alex would never, never forget his very smiling face. I still remember the occasions when, uh, well, let me say that the first occasion, we were students of the same college, but uh, uh, regrettably, I do not remember having had any great contact with him during those days. The first time I came across Alex was when we were together uh, for uh, the medical examination after uh, successfully completing the IAS examination. That was uh, in early 1963. And subsequently, I met him, or we all gathered for our foundation course in the uh, Missouri Administrative Training Institute. Well, uh, for some reason, 
as I got my letter of appointment late, I won't describe the reasons for that. Uh, I was alone for some time, along with another uh, colleague from the Indian Foreign Service. Just the two of us who are in the Missouri Academy, because Alex and all the other colleagues of the 1963 batch, they had gone for the military attachment and a tour of Jammu and Kashmir. So when they came back, you know, Alex introduced himself. I said, look, we are uh, from the same college. He said, yes, 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 yes. What a pity that we did not, uh, you know, remain in touch afterwards. But anyway, from that day onwards, for one year, while we were together in the academy, we were the closest of friends. And uh, let me also say that you saw, you heard his melodious voice. You saw how he was uh, conducting uh, the music. Now, for the first time in the history of the Masuri Academy, the Malus, that is the Kerala fellows who gathered there, we were a formidable number that year, about 20 of us. We decided to organize an Onam celebration for the first time in Missouri. So, you know, through the good offices of one of the uh, Malu officers working in the office of the uh, director of the academy, we organized a wonderful function. And uh, Alex did it so beautifully well. I thought that uh, what he sang in Malayalam, and, uh, you know, he assembled uh, three, four, five, six who were good at uh, singing. And together, they, you know, they kept the entire audience enthralled. That is perhaps the first time that the Malu Onam celebration was brought, you know, to the north. Let me say that. There may have been uh, Malayali associations in uh, Delhi and other parts of the country, but to a very, very small, I mean, but to a group of, uh, you know, people who are good or bad, I do not know, who are bound to, you know, occupy positions of importance and influence in government. We were exposed to that. And throughout uh, our time, Alex was uh, remembered for one more thing. He was, let me say, he was not a very studious, uh, you know, <laughs> probationer at the academy. There was a friend of his, I still remember his name. He was uh, Mr. Sinha. He had joined the IPS a, earl, a year earlier. He was in the academy a year earlier also. So Alex and he were the classmates. We were classmates. And Sina did instill in the mind of Alexander that this foundational course is of no consequence. You know, you are now in the service. Don't do any criminal act. You are assured of your 27,500. That was the, the senior, uh, what is that called? Senior scale. Not senior scale. Super time scale of the IAS. So he says that you do nothing except committing a criminal offense. If you do that, sit quiet, you are bound to reach that position. So this was the uh, you know, message given by friend Sina to Alex. And Alex used to tell this to us, but of course, he spent, we all of us spent a lot of time roaming around uh, Masuri and all that. But uh, let me tell you, in spite of this, you know, outwardly indifference to what is being taught, or what was going on around him, Alex was extremely good in picking up ideas, and most importantly, if I may say so, in making friends. But as all of us who are part of one organized service or the other knows, particularly those who are part of the All India Services, know that later in life, more than your perhaps expertise in any particular subject, or uh, in any department of administration, your contacts with your peers, your contacts with uh, you know officers outside the state, inside the state, that is extremely important for a successful administrator. So that quality Alex had in abundance, and that became very visible. You know, it flowered fully during the later years of Alex's service in the state of Karnataka. We used to meet very frequently, very, very often. Actually, during the 10 years I spent in the PMO, we used to meet at least uh, twice a year. And by that time, of course, he also had retired from service. 
but uh, from so many people, so many people, Keralaites, Kannadigas, and people from other parts of the country, I gathered very often that anyone with a problem goes to Alex, he will see to it that a solution is found to that. He left no stern unturned to, to see that other people are helped. I, to my mind, that is one of the most sterling qualities in an officer and not only an officer, in a human being. Be helpful, go out of your way, even if it is a little bit inconvenience to you, to see that the problems of others, you listen to them, you try your best to solve them. That attitude, to my mind, is something which every, every human being should cultivate, particularly if he or she happens to be an officer. Alex, you still remember in our hearts and minds many, many officers of your cadre, of the IAS, keep remembering you for what you did as an officer. You rose to the position of an MLA and later a minister. That again is uh, very rare. How many IAS or IPS officers get to those positions? So he was a very rare person. He was a, a multi-splendor, the personality he was, and above all, a wonderful, kind-hearted human being. So let me pay this very humble tribute of mine to my good friend Alex, although I know that we are all familiar with him and the works that he did. Well, more to the point at this point in time, his association with uh, the institution, this college, and uh, the XMIE was tremendous. Particularly after his retirement and my retirement also, when he used to come to meet, he used to talk about this institution and the work which is being done. And he was a pillar of strength, if I may say so, to the entire group of these institutions cannot be apparent, but he generated so much of goodwill for all your institutions, whether it is in Kochi or, or uh, in, uh, you know, in uh, Irvanandaviram or uh, whether it is in uh, some other place. That, I think, is a lasting contribution of Alex to this group of institutions. Well, friends, let me take you to what we are today. Well, Alex was, after all, uh, basically an administrator, was basically a man who is a part of the system of governance in this country. Well, in the 75th or 76th year of our independence, India is facing, to be very, very brief, without going into the background, is facing several, several challenges. At the same time, we have boundless opportunities. So this generation of us, particularly the younger people, have great problems before them. They may not realize, but there are many, many things which are happening in this country which will shape the future of this country, its people. At the same time, we have tremendous opportunities for uh, exploiting the fruits of uh, very, very high levels of knowledge. Technology is the driving force of today's society. Without technology, we are not going to move forward. And in that area of technology, in spite of the fact that we still large pockets of hunger. We still have large numbers of people who are deprived of the very basic necessities of life. We know that. But in spite of that, there is an India where large, big, big changes are happening. You, I am sure, will all be familiar with, or will be familiar with what is happening in the field of information technology which has changed our lives, literally. 
during the last 10 years or 15 years, life has become very different for us, all of us, whether you are a, a child, whether you are a school going boy or girl, whether you are an officer, even if you are an unemployed person, information technology has brought tremendous changes. Life is not what it used to be before the advent of this technology. Again, we read about the fantastic possibilities for doing good to society through the instruments of this technology. And at the same time, we are reminded time and again of the grave dangers which, which the AI or artificial intelligence has in store for us. I, mean, I am an old man, but those of you who are young, I'm sure would be using various tools which are available through, all, through uh, uh, information technology and uh, artificial intelligence. It's a very scaring world. So we have a choice to make. I'll come to that a little later. But let me also say, on a, I mean, we in Kerala may not realize it, we may not feel it, but we have become a country of huge disparities. Believe me, we are the second most, you know, country, I mean, second country which entertain or which has the widest of disparities between the haves and the have-nots. Do you know that 1% of the richest people in India own 44% of the wealth of this country? 1% of Indians, rich Indians, they own control 44% of the wealth of this country. That is where we are. And uh, I'm sure some of you would be familiar with this, uh, uh, with this non-government group called the Oxfam. It is headquartered in London. It does do, you know, studies about various aspects of development, progress, so-called, in different parts of the world. And India was the subject of their study. And uh, you look at that study of Oxfam. I'm not able to recollect all what is in that, but that gives you such a disturbing picture of uh, the India that we are living today. So on the one hand, we are enjoying the fruits of information technology. In Kerala, at least, we are enjoying the fruits of a higher standard of living. But in many pockets of this country, in many areas of this country, situation is not all that bright or glorious or good. With this hunger, can you imagine, even today, there are thousands of people, lakhs of people, who do not get three square meals or two square meals a day. So hunger stopped this country. Malnutrition for children, for uh, lactating women, pregnant women, that is also very, very rampant, which means that your future generation would be a, you know, a generation of people who suffer from these kinds of dis disabilities. Hunger, malnutrition, and unemployment. You see, from the time we became independent, unemployment or the ability or inability of the state to find gainful employments to the growing number of people, particularly the young, educated, that has been the most important, most important challenge that any government has faced. Even today, the rate of unemployment is very high. Successive governments, when they are in power, will quote some statistics or the other to indicate that no, employment is going during their time. The number of unemployed is coming down. Okay, you grant all that. So many things are being done to ameliorate the condition of the people, to provide employment to people, okay. But still, look around, see the statistics, which are convincing that we still have millions of people living in hunger, 
millions of people suffered who have suffered from malnutrition millions of people who are deprived of the very basic necessities of life you know a place a dwelling place clean water clean air these you know all these things are lacking they are not available to millions of people and of course unemployment unless we solve these problems we will never be able to claim you can claim but india won't be a shining india it will continue to be an india shining in some part and also in darkness in other parts so ladies and gentlemen while being very very proud of what we have achieved the 75 years of ours have been a long a fairly long period of tremendous achievements a country like india is number 3 or number 4 now in terms of its uh, gross uh, domestic product what they call the gdp about which we hear quite often that till recently india was after uh, usa china japan france and england but now we have our coming england and we have taken that place and hopefully as you keep hearing from our prime minister we will become the third largest economy in the world and even today the growth annual rate of growth of our gross domestic product is higher than that of many other countries we can be very proud of that but remember these figures do not reveal do not tell us what is the condition of the poor people you know, a gdp quoting the figure of gdp quoting the rate of growth doesn't mean a thing it will be a cruel joke on people who are deprived of uh, the necessities of life man who doesn't get three meals a day man who doesn't have access to uh, i mean to save drinking water what is the point of telling him that your country's gdp is growing we often hear about the benefits of this great economic development of countries trickling down to the poor that you know once the country become rich the benefits of that richness would trickle down to the poor people and their conditions will improve but how long will it take how long should the poor people you know wait to get the trickle down effect improve their livelihood so ladies and gentlemen over a period of time along with these measures tangible measures for making progress in different uh, sectors of the economy in different uh, fields of life the country has also been let's be clear about it giving direct benefits to the poor people we hear about uh, several schemes large number of them operational from for a long time which are aimed at which are directly aiming at ameliorating the condition of the poor you see without any hesitation let me let me say that uh, one of the most path breaking schemes to attack poverty and uh, under employment unemployment was what was started as uh, mahatma gandhi national rural employment program during the time of uh, dr manmohan singh that still today is one of the most important programs being run by the government for uh, providing some kind of employment gainful employment to large sections of people particularly women and at the same time ensuring that a certain amount of money gets into their hands we still have uh, programs for distribution of food grains you see look i mean we are in such a situation that we can go either this way or that way or we can choose a middle path without uh, disturbing the equilibrium it's up to the government of the day to choose that you see on the one side after 70 years we are now a grain exporting country we are not short of wheat we are not short of rice we are not short of sugar we are not short of milk actually we are surplus in all these and it is in this country of large surpluses that the poverty also coexists governments of the day can think of programs which will directly benefit the people and at the same time 
they can also think that look people should earn their livelihood why should they be fed that is not good that will uh, you know discourage initiative entrepreneurship among the people so the political political leadership has got to take a call what is the way but how do you balance you know how do you have an integrated picture of the development of this country that to my mind is one of the foremost challenges which india faces at 75 to choose a path of inclusive integrated development which aims at providing the basic necessities of life and ameliorating the conditions of the poor in a you know possibly in a time bound future if that were possible at all well <clears throat> we all read uh, newspapers we are aware of what is happening around us other than uh, in the political and uh, the economic field well ours is uh, you know a, a centuries old civilization you know that we are the proud inheritors of a great civilization you know going back to several several centuries i would like to read out to you a particular sentence from jawarlal nehru's discovery of india which i keep remembering although i don't know it by heart with your permission i'll read that out for a second he is saying she was that is india like some ancient palimpsest palimpsest means taliwala nu parayunnu on which layer upon layer of thought and revery had been inscribed and yet no succeeding layer has completely hidden or uh, erased which had been written in the past you the beauty of that thought that indian civilization is a layer upon layer of thought you know of things which have happened in this country but one layer does not obliterate the other so it's a layer upon layer of uh, what happened in this country during several years of you know we have had different kinds of regimes we have seen you know several religions coming up we have seen people uh, you know changing i mean people's lifestyles method of mode of thinking changing all these things we ourselves are witness to what has happened during the last few years tremendous changes that are happening but these changes in the case of indian civilization and it says these layer of change which happens today it will not be obliterated tomorrow another layer will come upon that but that layer along with the previous ones will be part of will is part of indian civilization look at the beauty of that thought can we think anything different anything more sublime than these lines about you know the inclusive about the civilizational values of our country so regrettably one one shudders to think about it but unfortunately regrettably you know we hear differences the nehruvian thought itself has been uh, dis- discarded he himself uh, is uh, you know being forgotten every attempt is being made to obliterate uh, his memory you know whatever that be statues pictures whatever whatever that is happening uh, on the one side and on the other i mean okay we we know india you know from uh, say jammu and kashmir to kanyakumari or uh, from uh, gujarat uh, to the other western part it's it's one country we know that in 1947 after india became independent 
India produced a written constitution, declared itself to be a sovereign republic. We know that. We are a republic. I hope we would have, all of us would have had the opportunity to read the preamble to the constitution, which is the essence of what India is all about. It starts with the words, we the people of India, having resolved to give ourselves, people of India, that is Bharat. In the constitution it is written, we the people of India, that is Bharat. So India is Bharat, India is India, the same thing. There is no difference between the two. And if differences are sought to be created, I mean, uh, in the absence of a better word, I would say it is a political mischief. But be that as it is, the very cornerstone of our democracy, the very cornerstone of our system of governance is enshrined in our constitution with this preamble. And uh, I read of late that it is being, I mean, actually, it is correct, I'll come to that, that the words secular and socialist, which form a part of the preamble, they were introduced not in uh, 1950, they were introduced later. But whether they were introduced later or not, today they are a part of the constitution and all citizens of India, irrespective of the position he or she holds in society, in governance, is bound by the provisions of the constitution. So, you know, subtle attempts are being made, I am told, to erase the words secular and socialist from the constitution. That these two words, on the ground, that were not in the original document, that they were interpolated. Incidentally, that took place during Mrs. Gandhi's time. One should not forget that also. So against that background, attempts are being made to obliterate secularism and socialism from our constitution. We all have some ideas or the other about uh, secularism. We all have some ideas or the other about, about uh, socialism. Well, uh, we know that in the strict conventional definition of socialism, India may not be a socialist state. India is striving or India was. And similarly, the world secular is interpreted differently in different parts of the world. But for us in India, the word secularism has a meaning which we, we all understand. It is all inclusive. It is not partiality or you know anything which is special to a particular religion or people who follow a particular religion or those who do not. People who follow different kinds of religions, they are the same citizens of India, enjoying the same rights, the same privileges, and having the same obligations. I think at this point in time, perhaps we, the citizens of India, when we reflect about India at 75, the immense possibilities for us in the coming years, thanks to you know, your information technology and your other uh, technical uh, know-how, we have to be very particular about, you know, about what do you call, uh, you know, maintaining, nourishing, and nurturing these constitutional values of uh, democracy and uh, socialism. Now, I'll take one more minute. That is to uh, well, I, I think I better avoid that because that only really illustrates what I said. You know. along with unemployment and uh, these attempts at uh, undermining the secular democratic principles of governance in India, you know, inequality or the growing disparity between the rich and the poor is a serious danger. Today we may not realize it, but over a period of time, the impact of it would be felt so widely you'll have wide social repercussions. 
besides denying opportunity to millions of Indians to grow up, it will also at the same time, you know, this may instill in the minds of the have-nots a sense of despair, a sense of uh, disillusionment. Large number of people, if they get disillusioned, I think the fate of that country is not safe. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are all uh, very, very small uh, fox in a big machine. But as citizens, we feel, we think, we give expression to our ideas, and in our own way, we may also seek to influence the course of history or the course of development. So, as I remember Alex, as I remember his universal love, affection, regard for everybody, irrespective of his or her station in life, irrespective of religion, caste, or color. That is what Alex was. And let me let me say that in our own way, we can, by practicing to the extent that is possible for us, these values of democracy, socialism, and well-being of all human beings, inclusive, not restricted to a group or another group, not for a church or a temple or for a mosque, but all inclusive, as Gandhiji kept on remember, reminding us, we are all one. Whether we are born into a Christian family, a Hindu family, or a Muslim family, if I were born in a Christian family, I would have been a Christian. It's only an accident of birth that we are in uh, following this religion or that religion. How many of us have chosen our religion? Not many, very, very few. So whatever be that, I think, let us remember these eternal values, if I may say so, and try, strive to cultivate them in our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again. I do not like to read out prepared uh, uh, speeches, and that is why I took the liberty of uh, uh, talking to you without uh, reading out a lecture. Uh, well, I do not know how far I have done justice to my friend, but I am quite sure if I have not done in the years to come, my, I mean, succeeding, uh, gener I mean, succeeding uh, lectures will uh, make up for whatever we have lost today. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you, Naya, sir, for your enlightening lecture. Your words have certainly added depth and meaning to our reflections on Dr. Alexander's life. A well-known face in Kerala and Tamil Nadu, Sri Syriac I PC Syriac IAS, served as the additional chief secretary, chief secretary, and as the principal secretary to government of India in departments like industries, transport, local administration, and commercial taxes. He was also the chairman of rubber board at Kotem district and was also the chairman and MD of several public sector undertakings under the government of Tamil Nadu. He is currently the chairman at Chennai campus of SAIM and the president of SAIM International School at Etu Manur Kotem. May I invite Sri PC Syriac IAS to offer felicitations. I think Reverend Dr. Afilash Grigiri, the manager of the institution. And of course, the chief speaker of the day, my senior colleague, Mr. T.K. Nair, Mr. Daniel Philip, who is the president of the XIME Society, which runs three management institutes already. And uh, the principal, Dr. Cynthia Kadarin Michael. And our, uh, Dr. Alexander's granddaughter, Miss uh, Zara Jos, she is also facing the occasion here. Then in the front rows here, we have other distinguished personalities, 
ലൈക്ക് മിസ്റ്റർ ജനാബ് ഷാഹുൽ ഹസൻ മുസ്ലിയാർ അവർകൾ വി ഹാവ് മൈ കൊളീഗ് മിസ്റ്റർ മണി മിസ്റ്റർ കൃഷ്ണകുമാർ അതർ അതർ ഡിസ്റ്റിംഗ്വിഷ്ഡ് ഗെസ് മൈ ഡിയർ യങ് ചിൽഡ്രൻ വിഷ് യു ഓൾ എ ഹാപ്പി ഡേ ഐ ഷുഡ് കൺസിഡർ മൈ സെൽ ഫോർച്ചുനേറ്റ് ടു ബി ഏബിൾ ടു സേ എ ഫ്യൂ വേർഡ്സ് about this distinguished personality dr alexander whose memory we are all remembering today as you know he has been an outstanding civil servant a very uncommon civil servant in the sense that generally you know ias indian administrative service people uh, actually they revel in not taking decisions no decisions are taken they are worshipers of the red tape and if people come they say i am sorry nothing can be done the rules do not permit but dr alexander was not of that spe- species not of that gender he was a man who will try to will do go, go all out to help the man who comes here in a disappointed way he comes after knocking at several doors he must have come to dr alexander he will welcome him he will find a way to solve his problem without hurting the government without violating the rules at the same time making forcing the government authorities to take a sympathetic view he manages to give satisfaction to them because i had really not known dr alexander until i became associated with xime a few years ago there i came to know people where, where, wherever i went to bangalore people are in high praise of dr alexander so i was wondering i was surprised how a civil servant can evoke such very enter such reactions from the people i have never come across anybody about whom all the people have only something good to say so today i am happy we are paying tribute his memory in the ias as you, as you know you sign a covenant you sign, you take an oath to the constitution you get an appointment order signed by, by the president of india so you say only the president has appointed me so nobody can easily remove me from the service so i am strong i am secure i am secure ias so this feeling of security later on it becomes a feeling of uh, serenity after many years and then you don't know what you are doing what you are refusing to do you don't know that situation happens so mr alexander has shown a new path which can be emulated by youngsters who enter the service in fact uh, uh, during the Uh, Mr. T.K. Nair has been mentioning about some of the pleasant times he had spent with Dr. Alexander in the National Academy of Administration, Masuri. He was recalling the Warnham celebrations which they conducted there for the Malayali. So I can assure you, that was the first time I think they did it in Masuri. So I can assure you that uh, we had continued, the further generations had continued. and during uh, during my term also we all conducted happily this celebration in fact uh, mahavagi kumarnashan i think he has said padu paattu ondu paadatha kaluda illa appo people like me also all of us the malayali officers there we all joined we all became master singers suddenly singing various songs etc so happy to remember all that then i think uh, Dr. Alexander is believed in solving problems, not really creating problems like many other, many other so-called efficient bureaucrats do. That way he did Anya Jeevan Udagi Swa Jeevitham. Anya Jeevan Udagi. Metalloira Sahai Kya Mendi Swa Jeevitham. Billy Arpicha Irala, Dr. Alexander. So I'm going to, I think I did not also take a lot of time. I can only hope and pray that at least some of you youngsters will be impressed by the good example 
given by Dr. Alexander. If you, the nice words which all the people here have spoken about him, I am sure the youngsters will get suitably inspired by all that. And uh, they will try to make use of this opportunity to get into uh, good, you know, maybe an All India Services is a very viable option for a young person today. As he mentioned, India is also on the rise. We are going up. Maybe some of you must have heard the name. Have you heard the name of uh, Sabir Bhatia? Has anybody heard the name Sabir Bhatia? If anybody has heard, please raise your hand. <laughs> Students, I'm sure no, nobody is there. Sabir Bhatia was the man who developed the email system called Hotmail for the first time. He was an ordinary middle class family student. Went to America after his Indian Institute of Science graduation in Bangalore. Went to University of California. And he developed the, the Hotmail system. And uh, Microsoft, who is the leader of Microsoft, the man who set up Microsoft, everyone will know, know I hope. Hmm? Bill, Bill, what is the next name? Bill Gates, everyone knows, I think I need not have to say that. He invited the Savir Bhatia, negotiated with him, and paid him $1,400, $1,400 million. That is 140 crores of dollars. That means about, um, maybe about how much rupees? About 400 crores of rupees he managed to get for a simple selling this uh, email system called uh, Hotmail. So you can imagine the possibilities in the world, which uh, was hinted by Sri T.K. Nair in his speech. The opportunities everywhere are there. The Indian children, they are, many of them are going away to foreign countries in search of this. Go away, no problem. But my feeling is after some time, after reaching there, after acquiring skills and learning, gaining experience, you must come back. They will come back because by that time, the Western countries, many of them are unfortunately showing signs of decline, whereas India is rising. The 21st century belongs to India, China, to Asia. So I am hopeful that many of you, you should be inspired to join civil services here or you should take up even positions abroad, study, acquire new skills, gain experience, gain know-how, know how to use innovation, come back to India, because India will call you there, India will have opportunities for you there, as hoped by Mr. Nair, T.K. Nair. So since uh, the time is, uh, I think it's all, my time, a lot of time is over. Anyway, let us remember the brilliant work, the innovative initiatives taken by Dr. Alexander and uh, draw inspiration from persons like him and work hard and uh, be of uh, some use to your family, the community, the country. Thank you very much. Wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Now, may I invite Dr. Renjana Vergis of Saim Kochi to read out the message from Chief Minister of Kerala. Thank you, Dr. Linda. With the presence of the dignitaries and everyone present here, may I read out the message from the Honorable Chief Minister of Kerala, Sri Pinraya Vijayan, which he has sent through Mr. Krishna Kumar of Symphony TV. I'm glad to note that a commemorative lecture series have been planned to honor the memory of Dr. J. Alexander, who had an illustrious career as a civil servant and continued to serve the people and the society even in his retired life. I hope that the lecture series, being jointly organized by Savi Institute of Management and Entrepreneurship, Fatima Mada National College and Symphony TV at the Fatima Mada National College column 
will inspire the younger generations to lead a life of service to the nation. May it grow in stature year after year. My best wishes, Pinarayi Vijayan. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Today, the presence of Dr. Alexander's family members with us is deeply appreciated, and I request Sarah Jose, the granddaughter of Dr. J. Alexander, to address the gathering. Greetings to everyone present here. I'd like to start by extending my heartfelt gratitude to our honorable chief guest, Mr. T.K. Nair. Thank you, sir, for gracing us with your presence and those wonderful words. I would also like to immensely thank Professor J. Philip, who unfortunately couldn't be here with us today. Professor Anil Philip, Mr. P.C. Syriac, Reverend Dr. Abhilash Gregory, Dr. Cynthia Catherine Michael, Mr. Krishna Kumar, Dr. T.V. Francie, Mr. Janab Shahal Hassan Masalriar from TKM, uh, TKM Trust, the faculty members of TKM, XIME, Fatima Mata National College, Symphony TV, and everybody else who was part of this event and their tireless efforts in organizing this distinguished event. Their commitment to excellence has truly made this occasion special. Today, we gather here to acknowledge this lecture by X XIME and FMNC, and also to honor the memory of a remarkable individual, my grandfather, Dr. Late J. Alexander. In this moment of reflection, we recognize the profound contributions Dr. J. Alexander had to the multiple fields he dedicated his life to. His legacy seems to transcend time, leaving a lasting mark on those of us who have been fortunate enough to have crossed paths with him. Aside from being my dada, he lived so many lives. He was a dedicated husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, friend, leader, educationist, philanthropist, and an exemplary human being. He truly was one of a kind. He prided himself in being an ordinary man, but everything he did was extraordinary. He gave his life for the development of the state, and he has touched so many lives during his time, so many we wouldn't even begin to count. Growing up, we, full, we never fully realized how much he was to how many. He was just dada to us. He was eternally youthful, even in his 80s, he was full of a zest and a zeal for life. He seemed to draw from an unending source of energy and was always ready to roll up his sleeves and serve. He was the definition of all the virtues a good man must possess. Courage, wisdom, justice, and temperance. He began his career as a lecturer uh, of the English language at this, very, at this very college and continued living his life being a teacher of sorts, constantly learning, constantly sharing his wisdom, and he was very generous with his wisdom. He then went on to become an IS officer, deputed to the Karnataka Cadre in 1963, and throughout his journey, he was always a supporter of educational institutions and education. He had a staunch, firm belief that knowledge is power and consistently looked for avenues to contribute to educational institutions in any way possible. May this event serve as a testament to the impact of his work and to the appreciation we hold for his lasting influence. I once again, on behalf of my entire family, would like to thank everyone at XIME and FMNC for hosting this lovely program. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. As a token of uh, gratitude and honor, on behalf of Sime Society, we would like to present a memento to our chief guest, Sri T.K.A. Nair. 
I request Mr. Anil Philip to do the honors. We have now reached the end of today's session. May I invite our respected principal, Dr. Cynthia Catherine Michael, to deliver the vote of thanks. Respected dignitaries on and off the dais, uh, dear TK Nair sir, IAS retired, who is the chief guest of today's program, PC Sirek IAS sir, Reverend Dr. Abhilash Gregory, Manager of Fatima Mother National College, Sri Janam Thangal Musalia, uh, uh, son of Janam Thangal Musalia, the chair, chairman of the TKM Trust, J Shahal Hassan Musalia, uh, Mr. Mani Ayes, Mr. Krishna Kumar, uh, sir, who happens to be the brother of my dear Professor Sabida K. Nair of English Department, his wife, respected dignitaries, relatives, faculty members of SIM students, and Fatima Mother National College heads of departments and faculty and students. My association with uh, Alexander Sir just, is just uh, as old as uh, three years old when uh, during the pandemic, we conducted an online program uh, back to Fatima. So I happened to invite Sir to join us, and he was graceful enough. And not only that, he was very happy to get a call from his college where he started his career. Uh, these are my memories with him, and he maintained that constant touch, calling on in between uh, clarifications regarding certain students, former students of his batch, etc. And it was shocking to hear his demise. So we are very happy to host this program because when you think about Alexander so when you ask someone about Alexander Sir, the first thing that they tell us is, when he hears that a column, a person from column, a columnite is in trouble or they need some, some help, he is the first person to rise up to the occasion and do whatever is necessary, whether they are in Kerala or whether they are in Karnataka. So that is the selfless spirit. As an administrator, we've been heard, hearing uh, great reports from his colleagues and friends. So I think that is something that we guys should emulate. Not only that we have so many civil servants, IAS officers, especially our TK Nair sir, who was the former principal secretary, not only to one prime minister, but three prime ministers, IK Gujral, uh, Manmohan Singh, and uh, A.B. Vajpayee. So such great personalities should certainly inspire our dear students to aspire to greater heights. Don't be satisfied with your postgraduate or, or your undergraduate degree. You have a great way to go. Let me move on to my um, role. First of all, I would like to thank Mr. T.K. Nair Ayes, sir, for his enlightening lecture in, as a beginning to the commemorative series of lectures in memory of J. Alexander, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for having come over to Fatima Mother National College. Sri P.C. Sirik Ayes, sir, was, has also uh, shared his memories of Alexander, sir, and it should truly inspire us uh, and let, let us try to emulate Alexander, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for having offered felicitations. Sarah Jos and her husband, Mr. Nusrat, is also here. Uh, they took the trouble for tra from 
traveling from Bangalore to Kollam today, I think, right in the early morning you left there. So I wish to thank you on behalf of SAIM Bangalore and Fatima Mother National College for having come over to Fatima College. I would like to personally thank TKM Trust Chairman uh, Janam Shahal Hussain Musaliyar, son of the great visionary Janam Tangal Mush uh, Kunyo Musaliyar, for having graced this occasion with your presence, sir. Thank you very much on behalf of our institutions. Thank you very much, Mr. Krishna Kumar and Mr. and Mrs. Krishna Kumar for coming over and uh, com uh, gracing this occasion. We are honored to have you here. My association with him uh, is as a brother of my own professor. And uh, we are also Facebook friends, I think. Thank you, sir, for coming over to our institution. I would like to thank the... Uh, on behalf of Fatima Mother National College, I would like to tham, thank the, the chairman, uh, uh, president of SAIM, Mr. Anil J. Philip. But before I go on to thank him, I have to thank his father, Professor Philip, uh, because Professor Philip is uh, the brain behind this program. He called us personally and asked us whether we will be able to host this program in Fatima College. I'm so thankful to Professor Philip for having given us the opportunity to host this program in our college, as well as I thank Mr. Anil J. Philip for your remarks and your memories of J. Alexander IAS. Thank you, sir, for having come over to our institution. Special thanks to our manager, Reverend Dr. Abhilash Gregory, because at the moment that this program, when Professor Philip called us, manager immediately with the consent of our patron, Bishop Paul Anthony Mullasheri, gave the consent to conduct this program and let it be a lecture series which will be held annually. Thank you, Father for that. Respected heads of departments, faculty members, thank you very much for joining us. And thank you, dear students, for being so patient. And I looked at the time, and it was past lunchtime for you. So, so, but still, you were very patient. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear all, for having graced this occasion. Thank you, ma'am. Now let's all rise for the national anthem. Punjab, Sindh, Gujarat, Maratha, Dravida, Kalabanga, Binde Hima Chalaya Muna Ganga, Uchala Jala Jitaranga, Tava Shubha Nami Jage, Tava Shubha Shisha Mage, Gahe Tava Jaya Gada, Jana Gana Mangala Daya Kajaya He, Varada Bhagya Vidada, Jaya He, Jaya He, Jaya He, Jaya 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 He. Respected guests, uh, 